Hello Android fans, this is Reverend Kyle with the much anticipated addition to my uh, video tutorial collection. Uh, today we are going to go over uh, some items that have been widely suggested and requested and so let's just get into it. Uh, I'm assuming that if you are watching this you have already watched some of my other videos such as flashing Dexter's uh, ROM onto your Milestone XT720 and uh, hopefully you've also watched my 8 minute Linux video and have set up uh, your Linux environment uh, with Oracle VirtualBox because we will be using this uh, for this uh, new video. Uh, I have already started up my Puppy Linux in my Oracle VirtualBox and I'm going to use that now to uh, structure and partition uh, a new 8 gig SD card. Uh, it's only class 4 um, but uh, we're going to use this for our tutorial today. So I've plugged it into my uh, USB uh, hub here and I'm going to connect it to my Puppy Linux at uh, which point I'm going to go and start up our G uh, parted software, the partition manager. Tell it to scan all my USB devices. And then I will go in here and select SDB, which is my 8 gig, which shows up as 7.61 gig. Uh, so you'll see that it's completely unallocated. There are no partitions on this card currently. So I'm going to go in new, and uh, my first partition, I'm just going to make it 60. 800, uh, 6.8 gig, and I'm going to call that FAT32, and I'm actually going to call it FAT32. It is a primary partition. It's at the beginning of the card, and I hit Add. The second partition I'm going to do is a 900 megabyte EXT3 partition. Uh, you can do 2, 3, or 4. My personal preference is 3, and I will call that EXT3. Again, primary partition, second on the card, add. So now I have uh, 87 megabytes of unallocated space. I'm going to do new, leave it for the rest of the space on the card here, and I'm going to select Linux swap as the third partition. I will not label my swap, just to be different. Hit add and apply. Are you sure you want to apply the pending operations? Yes, I am. So what this is going to do is give us the requirements necessary to uh, A, run any one of our uh, ROMs that are available, B, uh, use either, uh, well, move apps to the SD card, let's just put it that way, and then uh, third is use the uh, newly discovered uh, swap capabilities with the fast boot, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit. <clears throat> so once the card is done, uh, then we'll be able to proceed with uh, getting the files necessary. As usual, I'll have links in the uh, subject and the description of the video uh, on YouTube as to where to get these specific files. Uh, over here I have a directory uh, I have downloaded the uh, My UI Optimized uh, ROM from uh, our friend and compadre Cal Powers. And then I have the CAM update, the version 3, and the very, very recently version 4 uh, that we will use, and then uh, the fast boot uh, kernel also, we will discuss that. So these are the files that we're going to use. Uh, I also have, and this is something that uh, maybe uh, might confuse some of you, this is done, so I'm going to close it, uh, is that I also have the original Dexter's XT720 version 1.3 uh, directory. In here is the open recovery, the root, and the Android directories that are essential, especially with a new card. So I just keep this handy on my desktop for when I'm going to reformat a card, which I just did. Uh, we are going to, at this point, uh, remove the USB device. Let me close this here first. And, uh, you know, always make sure you unmount. We'll do that real quick here. Unmount all. And we'll go to USB devices and undo that. So from here I can move from my Puppy Linux over to uh, Windows, which now has my FAT32 and it's completely empty. In this, I'm going to put the contents of the XT720 version 1.3 files. This is our base. Uh, this is going to give us all of the uh, basic files that we're going to need, and then we're going to tweak this a bit to uh, be 
ready for the new stuff. Now the XT uh, my UI optimized uh, directory or uh, file here is zipped. We're going to open this up and there is a directory inside. Extract. Do some multitasking here. Okay, so that is done. So now we have this directory. Inside this directory is another directory. This is one that we're going to copy. Uh, now inside here are four files, the boot and the system, and those are the files that we leave in this directory. And we're going to go over here into the Nandroid and then into Open Recovery. This is the stock, and uh, you know we'll just leave that here, but we're also going to bring over the MyUI Optimized ROM as well. Now you'll notice that we also have these uh, other zip files and uh, we're going to come back to that. Uh, right now we don't have the necessary directories on our card until we've flashed the ROM and gotten uh, system recovery uh, loaded. So at this point my card is completely prepared and we are going to go put it in the phone and uh, begin our flashing. Okay, we're back to the phone here. Uh, we have uh, put the card in, and I've turned the phone on. And uh, I already have a custom ROM uh, loaded right now. Uh, it's not really relevant which one uh, I have. Uh, so we're going to go into the menu here and find system recovery. Now remember, we've just recently loaded our card up. So we're going to go ahead and install the recovery system first. Uh, it may or may not come up and ask for super user permission. If it does, please allow it. Uh, so install success. Okay. Uh, then we're going to do recovery boot. Now the install that we did creates all of the necessary directories, uh, such as the updates and the scripts and all of that. And then uh, from there, uh, going into recovery mode. Now, now some of the newer ROMs have uh, that recovery um, option uh, when you press the power button other than so there's power off there's reboot and then there's recovery that's a very handy feature and I appreciate that uh, <clears throat> so basically uh, this is going to be a repeat of uh, some of the other videos of mine that you've probably seen uh, we're going to go down to Nandroid and uh, make sure we can see that well uh, we're going to go to Nandroid and then we're going to go to restore and I'm using the volume up and down uh, buttons and the camera button uh, so we're going to go to uh, Restore, and you'll notice that the stock item is there because we left that there from Dexter's, uh, and then the XT uh, My UI Optimized, and I'm selecting that, and I'm going to go down to Restore All, and we let it do its thing. Okay, it's done. And for the sake of time restraints, obviously I've, I've uh, uh, taken out uh, the time that it took uh, to, to actually do this. Uh, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Go Back, and we're going to go back again, and we're going to go back yet again, and we're going to go down and hit the bottom three, wipe the Dalvik cache, and we'll wipe the Data Factory Reset. And we'll wipe the cache partition. And we're done. So we're going to hit reboot system. And uh, the next thing that you'll see here is going to be the, uh, the load up for the new ROM. You may or may not see uh, Calvin uh, expressing his uh, love for Motorola here. Uh, that is something that appeared from uh, one of the previous um, custom ROMs, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily end up in uh, the newer one. So if you have that, good for you. If not, it's not a sign that you did something wrong. A little disclaimer there for you. Okay, please remember for the sake of timing here, I have reduced some of the load times for this video. So if your uh, load window stays on a little bit longer than in my video, just that that's correct. Uh, okay, so here is the actual look of the MyUI uh, ROM, and uh, we'll go in real quick, and uh, I'm just going to skip through some of this stuff very quickly.
Okay, so now I'm in, and I am actually, uh, I'll go to the uh, settings here just to show you what we've got. You'll see that we are uh, pretty much running the My UI Optimized uh, Dexters 221. It shows the kernel version, all of that. Uh, I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to put in uh, some what I consider to be essential software and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back now, and uh, what I've done is I've loaded a few essential pieces of software. Uh, I have uh, gone in and uh, added uh, a couple things, uh, Quadrant, Root Explorer, and uh, Set CPU. Uh, I've also taken the liberty of setting my milestone overclock to 1 gigahertz, and I have uh, set my Set CPU to also uh, be pretty much what I like on demand. Okay, uh, so, uh, and again, this is just the standard My UI. We haven't done any updates yet. Uh, I just wanted to run a uh, quadrant with all of you to see what this is actually going to give. And I'll tell you, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with the results of this uh, just by itself without any of the updates. Uh, it seems to do a, a pretty nice job uh, of achieving uh, decent numbers here. It's hard to believe what this phone did with its stock ROM compared to what we get now. It baffles me. Now keep in mind I am, like I said, overclocked to 1 gigahertz, and it looks like we are achieving 1359 is the official number. Uh, I am happy with that. So I'm going to now at this point uh, switch the phone. I'm going to go plug the phone back into my computer, and we are going to put the update files on and then uh, load them through Open Recovery.